Hi everyone, McBeer here, back with another deck guide for you. Did you know it was a full moon yesterday? Of course, we're going to be playing Monsters Full Moon on Tuesday. So that was yesterday at the time of this recording of the video. And uh, I was thinking about how I wanted to approach this. So as it happened, I have a nice conversation with uh, Ocean Mud, who is the Aridin master, the absolute master of Aridin. If you ever have any questions about Aridin, he's the guy you need to talk to. He gave me this really great Siri Nova list, which I augmented slightly. Um, but the idea is that it works as a moonlight weather hybrid with Aridin at the command, as this is uh, Ocean's specialty. So I took a look at the list. For the most part, I agreed with almost everything. I mean, I don't necessarily disagree, but Ocean Mud has uh, such a great track record of playing Aridin all the time. So his plays are a little bit more, I guess, uh, robotic, I think, when it comes to this kind of stuff. You know, he loves playing Iris. Uh, and stuff like that. So I took Iris actually out of this list, but let's just go through it real quick. So Aridin is your is your king, uh, true king Aridin, of course, king uh, king of moonlight, king of frost. So he is pretty good here. You use him to navigate the wild hunt hounds. If uh, you don't need to do that, then you can use him for more of a value play, perhaps with a wild hunt warrior or a wild hunt rider in that situation. Um, the original list he gave me did not have Karen Thier in it. It actually had Caretaker in it. Um, Ocean Mud later corrected himself, saying that he meant to put Karen Thier instead of Gels. So Gels was never supposed to be in this list at all. I, however, thought Gels worked really well. So my list runs Karen Thier, Igni, uh, because you do have some row manipulation with Frightener. You run Gels just to make sure you can access your gold cards. And Siri Nova is one of those gold cards you'd love to access. Karen Thier allows you to have that extra row of Frost. Igni allows, you know, you usually have any of these cards you need on call. You want to have Siri Nova late, later on. Uh, for the Silvers, Frightener is pretty good. In a, in a deck that runs Igni, I tend to also really love Frightener because it moves a unit as well. It's really easy to create that Igni row, and Spies are really important right now. Uh, same reason why you're running Summoning Circle to kind of counter the Spy game. It's unfortunate, but it just kind of you have to do it. You need to see if you can outspy your opponent. So the Summoning Circle allows you to copy that Spy, but in a pinch, it can allow you to copy a pretty crucial unit normally. So I use Summoning Circle in a lot of different ways. Um, you know, there was one game where I stole a Farseer and it was really good because I'm boosting every turn. So there's some situations where you can get a lot of use out of the Summoning Circle, but usually Spies, Spy Protection is what the Summoning Circle is for. Imperial Manticore and Toad Prince work together. The Toad Prince will consume the Imperial Manticore uh, out of your hand for a 19 point play and a future 20 point play for Monster Nest. So that's usually how it goes. Monster Nest can also allow you to establish carryover in games where you need to beat a War Dancer, let's say, or even, you know, something something like Old Geared even. Six is usually pretty good for the Barbagazi coming out of the Monster Nest, but Monster Nest tends to usually be the ghoul that eats the Manticore for the 20-point play. Finally, Nekurat. Now, Ocean's original list ran Iris. I really struggled with finding reliable ways to kill Iris because I'm no master. Uh, and Iris is a card that he really, really likes to use in almost every one of his decks, to my knowledge. So I wanted that extra row of Moonlight, so I ran the Necurat, and I think that I got a lot of returns from the Necurat, so I would recommend it. But Iris, of course, if you have a little bit more advanced Aridin training, uh, you may want to run Necurat. Uh, but this is a Siri Nova deck, so the bronzes really tell the story here. Two of each bronze. The Wild Hunt Rider gets you a fair amount of value, and now that they're 10 strength, they're just pretty legit. You can Navigator one out if you need to do that. And in a deck that runs Iris, you are more likely to create an Iris row. However, since you only had... you have, Well, you have three rows of Frost, so, you know, it depends. You have to really plan your rounds ahead, I think. But the Wild Hunt Rider generally, in a situation where you have two ofs, the Wild Hunt Rider is a fine pick. Other picks for this, if you didn't want to enhance your Frost damage, something like uh, Ice Giant, perhaps... Um, but I think that the numbers really work in Wild Hunt Rider's favor because this is basically every turn of this deck is about enhancing the engine you're building. You're putting a row of Moonlight, another row of Moonlight. Now you have a row of Frost, two rows of Frost, Wild Hunt Rider making it even better, uh, Werewolf making it even better. Like you're always making the engine harder and harder to come back from. Werewolf, of course, needs to be run in a Moonlight deck. It's a 14 point bronze that grows. It's a fantastic card when you have Moonlight on the board. Uh, non-negotiable in this situation. Wild Hunt Hound gets your Frost out, so this deck gets very, very thin. Even though it's a 26-card deck, it gets very, very thin. The Siren pulls the Moonlight out, more thinning. Frost and Moonlight do come out of your deck from these units. The draws are kind of tricky sometimes, but you want to make sure that you do as much thinning as possible as early as possible, especially before you play Frightener, especially before you play Toad Prince. You want to draw really high-quality cards. One of the main tips that Ocean Mud gave me when we were talking about this deck. First light in here as well as Reconnaissance. This makes this deck 
arguably hyper thin. You might say it's hyper thin because of reconnaissance. Reconnaissance, so in the mulligan phase, you want to mulligan almost all your units away because reconnaissance will likely get you the unit you need or a unit you need to enhance your engine capabilities. First light also allows you to get the bronzes out of your deck. Make sure you get nice and thin so you're highly likely to draw Siri Nova, which you sometimes need to win the game. Uh, but first light also can be used in a situation where you're going up against weather. Not too common, but it just makes it that much thinner. So you have a very, very thin deck, making sure that you don't get brick draws. So you want to plan your sirens. You don't want to end up with a dead werewolf. The toad can sometimes fix it, but sometimes you end up with a dead werewolf or a wild hunt rider that doesn't do very much. It just takes a lot of experience. This is a fairly advanced deck. I have simplified it by taking Iris out and Caretaker out, but you could add Caretaker in and Iris in and take Gauss out and you have Ocean Mud's list. And he plays this up in the 4,500 Grandmaster territory. So it can be done. It's very good. There are different levels that this deck can go, but I do think that Moonlight works very well as a weather hybrid to give Moonlight the support it needs. And Aridin is a great leader for it. And I think the deck was really fun. I honestly feel this deck is great and I will be playing it again. I love engine decks. I think I came to that conclusion here. Being able to weather three rows and boon three of your rows makes it really, really hard for even the highest tempo decks to take you out in a round one. So do recommend this Siri Nova Moonlight deck. And I've got some great matches for you. Two show matches, some names you may be very familiar with. Hope you enjoy, uh, hope you enjoy the matches. Like and subscribe if you enjoy the videos. I just got more coming for you, my friends. See you soon. Thanks for watching. Baxter87, I got this cap from CD Projekt Red. They were making prototypes for merch. This is not a cap you can actually buy. This is the only one, I believe, that's out there, which is pretty damn cool. But eventually there will be future merchandise. Whether or not they go with this particular design with Gerald Igni on the brim or what actually happens from future merchandise, I have no idea what they want to do. But I will say that I love this hat and I love that they love that I love hats because I, I get some cool hats from CD Projekt Red. Unsolicited. They are so kind. This hand is just good, right? It's just fine. I think maybe I want reconnaissance, but the fact that I have the, the moonlight on the moon is... Got the spy, got the summoning circle. I think it's okay. I think I should always be mulliganing units for recon. Oh, it's Berja. I'm up against Berja. Berja, I'm t okay. Let's do this. Let's do this. Come to me. Berja on pro ladder right now. Unexpected. All right. I'll feed you to the crows. All righty, right. Movement Squiatel, perhaps. Perhaps, perhaps. Oh boy, get your popcorn. All right, how are we gonna do this? How are we gonna do this against our boy, Berja? Just keep thinning, right? We just keep thinning, this is what we thinning. played for! Joe Snow with the hose. Unexpected. What's up, Joe Snow? Hope you had a great stream. I thought you would still be streaming. Now I'm not sure what I'm gonna do on the break, which is occurring in 12 minutes. But we, I will be breaking to uh, get the cam set up for the podcast. Hope you can all come back. Uh, yeah. That guy is staying put. That's the thing about werewolves. They're not going anywhere. Emote him. I have my emotes off, guys. I have my emotes off. I'm super lame. You guys you guys don't understand. You guys didn't work really curious why no one emotes me ever. It's not out of respect, my friends. It's not out of respect. But I think for Pro Ladder, I should turn the emotes on. I should turn the emotes on. Movement weather? Movement weather? Humans are not to be trusted. What is he playing? What are you playing? Popco. What are you playing, Popco? It's going to be tough to weather move, but 
I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the end of that sentence is. <laughs> He's probably sniping Gap Burgess. Oh no! Oh, okay. Didn't think I didn't put him on that because he was moving my units out of the moonlight. I just didn't put him on having that. Not for a second. Oh man. Okay. Do I play? I play Aridin anyway, right? I play Aridin for the second Frost. But I probably need to get out of this round now. This is going to be bad for me. Move me out of the weather and then hit me with the weather, you sneaky as dead as a person. We got it thin, right? We got it thin. We're going to spend our time doing some thinning here. He'll have R&R &R as well. I mean, you usually don't run one without the other, so... Pushing is actually maybe not incorrect here. We've got the low value row with the three and the five, so we're going to get two, two points back, kind of. Man, I almost placed Manticore on that bottom row. That would have been so bad. That would have really played into that. Poor ladder will end. Poor ladder will end. Lord Cruzada is correct. January 4th, 12 p.m. Extended by one day due to the New Year's Eve kidnapping of the pro ladder what a great game to go out on pal Berger. spell a tell I think I'm done here I think maybe I might actually be able to do carryover I might be able to how big Okay, so I'm playing a nine strength, so I'll be up at 16 points. This wa this is a wash, and I have my one strength. Ra I have my one strengthers here. So I think I play Barbagazi into carryover, so I can't get War Dancered. I'm just putting him on any possibility here, because I don't know what he's playing. Because I'm passing. And I'm hoping that he's not playing 20 points right now. You're dead already. Freiner will be a little tough to maneuver, so maybe the toad is on my draw. I would I feel like I just never draw the toad. I never draw the toads, man. I need that toad. Yes, score. Wait, don't tell me stuff like that. If that's real, don't tell me what's in his deck, even if it's not in his hand. I don't want to know. I don't want to know that stuff. No jar today. I'm not drinking out of a jar today. No, just a just a glass stein, which I will need to fill more put more water in. Well, we used all our frost, didn't we? Okay, hit me with that spy action. wonder how good Igni's going to be here. Depends on how long the rounds are going to be. Depends. Depends. The jar of water. Yeah, I'd only drink out of a jar sometimes. I have multiple different glassware. Z you want to get back into Pro Ladder, Nordy? It's fun. It's like casual mode where people are playing, they're trying, but some people aren't trying. Oh man, I like the amount of thought he puts into his plays. I can I can get behind that. Berger, you and I are cut from the same cloth. Special prize, just for you, love. Really? I want to play just like some crap from here, right? I just want to play some crap here. Why am I playing my first light, though? <laughs> He's playing weather on me, man. Why am I playing my first light? Oh, that was dumb.
I could draw it, I guess. Shit. He may pass on me right now, though. It, you know, it's, it, it stimulates the pass muscles. It stimulates the pass muscles. Spike trap. Of course he's playing with Pavko, too, right? We have to assume he's playing uh, with Pavko. That's ballsy. Oh no, I don't have. I could have Necurat still. What unit was played last year? The werewolf. We use Monster Nest already, so it's not super important. The uh, I mean, I still play it probably. Man, I'm in big trouble. I'm going to have to play that Frightener eventually. He's going to move stuff into this. He's going to move it in anyway, right? I am very... You know what? I do like that he's playing a deck I've basically never seen before. Never seen... Never seen Spike Trap. Just negative one, man. If we were on even, I would consider playing the Spy. But I could play the Spy and take it with Igni, right? Seven to nine, 16, 20. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure, right? I take it with Igni. That's so important. I'm not going to waste that one. Not wasting that one, Berja. Although, he's getting a really short round if he wants to play Ragnarok. A pretty short round. I can actually clear that now, and I get sick, I get, I get quite a boost. I could clear this. Shouldn't have wasted that last one, though. That was dumb. His famous smuggler finisher? I don't even know what that is. He's famous? He's famous for this deck that he's playing? That's awesome, man. Merja owning it. I love it. Okay, this is fine, right? Um, so I will take it with Igni. And we will go into the last round where I have a clear skies. Let's get this over with. It wouldn't have even been like that much if he stayed in that round and I went to go and I would wait for the smuggler to get to 13 or to 12. What happens first? The buff happens on the smuggler first, right? Recon. Guys, I need, I need something. Necrat's pretty good. So we play Necrat first because we want to get this ticking, but he's going to play Ragnarug, right? He's going to play Ragnarug. This is um, Frightener. Now it is not Frightener. This could end up being an extra 10 points, so I might as well just try to I just clear this here, right? But it's going to line up with Scorch, right? going to line up with Scorch. Eventually. No, it'll it'll leapfrog it. It'll leapfrog. It'll go from 7 to 9. It's actually good. And if he moves with um if he moves with a Moose and Mercenary, I just summoning circle it back. I think. Coexistence, my ass. Yeah. So I just summoning circle it back, right? Now we must stick together. And I'm still protected from scorch this way, and I will remain protected from scorch. Humans have no place in Brockalong. 
I get all this back now. And then I have a 25 point play. So I'll be ahead. He'll need to play. I think I'm okay, right? Because if he's playing like some Zoltan stuff, like I don't know. I don't even know if it's better just to go for the 10 point Wild Hunt, right? But no, nah, I need to clear this. I need to, I would need to play it. If I play it in here, I'd lose three. Clear it, right? Just making sure I got the right one here. So he needs a 31 point play right here. Berta. It was strong. A well fought match, my friend. A pleasure, a pleasure to play against you, my friend, pal Berta. Yeah, it was just probably just worth it there because he was gonna ard me, ard me into the into the. I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't know. If, the, either way would have made made or broken the game. I had I had quite a lead on him. Good game. Good game. But I'll play a couple more games. I'll play a couple more games. I upload the podcast. Uh, it goes to iTunes. The feed is picked up by lots of different podcasting apps. We are predominantly an audio podcast. And I think that the I think that the term podcast might be getting blurry because there's people that Oh Matranos. Right on. Well at least we're getting another show match here. Matranos playing Bruver. Here we go. Um, podcasts generally were always supposed to be audio only. Like we, like I'm a huge fan of radio. I've always loved radio. Okay, we dodged, the, we dodged the moonlight there. We got the coin as well. This will be a test right here. This will be a test right here against Metro God. SoundCloud is not on SoundCloud. No, we we are available but from iTunes. It's like the, the it's like the with the iTunes and the um and the feed. Like SoundCloud is not really. You can get the podcast, and we have a site, commandersworn.com, which is just kind of a storage locker for each episode. We do videos sometime. This will be a live videoed podcast as well. Um, but we are we're audio. We're audio predominantly. So that's why there's not a video for every episode. However, we are living in the future, so it is 2018. There should be a video for every podcast. We're going to get to a regular schedule of having a meeting with uh, with the crew coming up on next weekend. Next weekend, we're going to have a chat. We're going to have a solid schedule. We're going to plan out the next couple episodes, and we're going to move forward on a new website. That's what I would like to do. That being said. That might have been too early. I might have just wanted to go for uh, for Moonlight first. Our brothers in the valleys need us. Oh, this is actually good that he's playing more anti. We can play the Wild Hunt Rider next turn. Because... It's only going to get one value anyway right now. Come to me. Engine, engine, engine. Let's go. So like I said, engine should thrive against tempo. Tempo should thrive against... Sorry. Yeah, control thrives against engine. Engine thrives against tempo. Tempo thrives against control. That's how I feel about Gwent right now. So in theory, in a long round, I should have, well, I didn't have to pass on him because I had the coin. I had the coin this time. Burza into Matranos is quite the matchup. Yeah, well, that's fine. You can get access to it on Commander Sworn website. Yeah, 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 no, it's fine. You don't, well, you don't have to use Apple things. Any podcast, any, anywhere you, you can pick up the podcast. The I use an app. I use an app called Downcast. That's the that's my favorite podcasting app. It costs a dollar, I think, but that's my podcast app of choice. Skyatel! Our feed is picked up by that. It should be picked up by um, other other uh, casting apps as well. The iTunes podcasting app, I guess you can't get outside of uh, outside of Apple. But okay, now we can play this. <laughs> I 
I mean, I'm giving, I'm putting stuff in his graveyard. That's one thing that, that's one thing that hurts me here, because uh, you know, Squaytal is the number one graveyard faction in Grunt right now, so I should be careful about what I give him. He already has an agitator for Hattori if he needs it, and that's fine. If he needs to take it with Hattori, he can play it now. He won't play Polly this round, but I'll play everything. I think I play everything here. Maybe. I'm not really sure what the Toad eats. No gold cards. kind of crappy. I don't know why I get such bad luck against, like, superstars. Skyatel! Attack! Yeah. Whole lot of weather going on. This deck is, this might be my new favorite deck, I think. Not that I'm gonna be playing a ton of it, I just think that I like it a lot. I think that this deck is legit as far as playing Pro Ladder for, you know, just get, getting, some, getting some Gwent in. Seems like it can compete okay. Win rate today was pretty good. We're actually seven and two because the first game we reset the uh, after the first game we reset the counter because I had good stats on it. We're actually seven and two. I had a lot. You can see that I've lost to Metronos before, which is probably not that surprising. He's number twenty-two on the pro ladder right now. Nigh is the time. For the white Ooh, the double zap. Pretty good. What's better for me right now? The bigger tempo play is better for me. I think werewolves are great. I think werewolf, al werewolf alpha will probably never be played in constructed. Unless, I mean, I shouldn't say that. There's probably like maybe some Triss butterfly stuff you can do with werewolf alpha. But I just think that it's just, I think it's because Moonlight doesn't have enough solo support. Like, a pure Moonlight deck is not as good as a hybrid Moonlight deck. But, like, Aridin is your full moon guy, whereas a different leader might be your blood moon. Like, Unseen Elder is your blood moon leader. Aridin is your full moon leader. And I love that because why do I love that? The flavor, what's behind Aridin? The full moon, y'all. Makes perfect sense to me. We got him. We go down a card to take this. What card do we go down? We played almost all of our frosts. We probably just play the rider in this case because we're more likely to draw into the siren or the Necarat. Or I just play the recon to thin. But I want to make sure. This is a better toad target. But then again, I always have a toad target if I feel like it's not going to work for me. The siren is guaranteed, actually. I'll be putting this. I'll put put this away, and I'll get siren. I'll get siren and werewolf after I mulligan this. That's how you do it. We got the Nick you're at anyway. We got the Toad into Manticore as well. I think we just lead off with Toad Manticore and then pass. Because I don't think he'll... I don't know if he can make the 18 points. Like, he, he might have it, but he may not want to spend it. I mulligan this. Nice draw. Nice draw for a nice long round. The open pass, like, not surprising. I had the option to stop that. Of course, the best players are running War Dancers, so I should have maybe thought about that. I could have played Barbagazi. I still play Toad anyway. It's still fine. Gals is a great draw. And if he doesn't do 17 points right here, we pass, but we pass anyway. I want to get Frightener though. That's the thing.
I also want to put Siri Nova on top of the deck. That's like the ideal situation. I play Gals into Frightener, Siri Nova on top of the deck. Mm -mm -mm. That'd be okay with me. Am I the only one who has voice sync problems with me, Beard Stream? No, lots of people have that problem. I'm not really sure how to fix it. My friend. Okay, I got it. I think I have to do this roll here. Otherwise, I'm just going to be down on cards because I can't get be I can't get back now. I'd have to play Monster Nest as well. I don't know if I want to do that, but I think this is my only hope. We got almost what we wanted to see. Summoning Circle, perhaps. Yaven, perhaps. Yaven is fine. Puts me in a tie. Summoning Circle is also fine. Puts me in a tie. It's actually good. That extra point that Gels gave me is so crucial right here. There's no solution that works for him, and he has to keep playing. This is actually the best possible scenario, that it's exactly 13 points. So I want the long round, right? Because I have Nekurat and I have Werewolves coming out, Sirens coming out. So I need that out we need to get that started. And then we have the 20-point Monster Nest. We have an Igni we take whenever we can. And Caranthir also gets going. And we draw into Siri Nova draw would be the best, right? We actually need to get rid of one of these things because, I mean, we, if we mulligan into a bronze unit... Oh, fuck, this sucks a little bit here. There's so many bad things that happen if we mulligan here. We got so lucky with that mulligan, but we had to do it. Because we basically have two bronze units. We could have mulligan into the moonlight, which would have been bad. Mulligan into the reconnaissance would have been a wash. It would have been the same bad thing, but this is actually pretty huge. Summoning circle is pretty huge. We just take the best possible situation. I've never run from no one, and I'm not about to start. So we start off with the Siren. You wouldn't want to hurt us, would you? If only there was a way I could draw more cards, I could Siri Nova. Not having Siri Nova, a lot of stuff went against me in this game, I think, except for the coin was good. But it's like the price you pay for the coin is never drawing gold cards. That's that's like my life. I sorry I didn't say goodnight to you. Twenty three random twenty three. Um, I will definitely turn the stream off and then back on again because that way it preserves my video. No corruption due to freezing, unless I freeze during this game. Knocking on that wood. To outshine all others. But I will be. I think I will. Be, the stream will have to go down for a time, and I do apologize that there's no well, place to hold you. As a poison. But I do need to kind of preserve this video because if I go for like a five hour, six hour stream, it just increases the likelihood that there will be a problem, unfortunately. But it's better off this way. Where is Summoning Circle going to be the best? This is a 13 point card. He will be playing more of these. I need to get my engine going. We're covered now for that row. Additionally, we can Igni it. And I might just take that Igni. Because I don't think he's going to play anything else into that row. He'll show me now where he's playing after this. But I think I just Igni the 13. Just take the 18 point Igni. We still have enough meat on the, on the row to tackle it. If we had Siri Nova in hand, I would think, I would say we would probably win this game. But we do not. If he plays Yaven, we have a chance. A good chance. Nothing it's a 50-50 shot, actually. Sport. If he gives us Yaven. Hail 
fucking blind me. I'm gonna take this. Twenty point igni now. Nah, but I, I I don't have to I don't have to rush now. There's no rush here. Yeah, it's the it's the buff over time stuff is what I need to set up here. Falling pretty far behind here. I have I have options, but they're not great. We have 20 points on Monster Nest. We have a werewolf as well. In fact, if we can get the summoning circle on Nekurat, like if he plays a gold card here, if we play summoning circle on Nekurat, that's pretty good, right? Even though it's four turns. Water as a poison. That may be the best summoning circle target. I'm still not sure. He has three gold cards left, three cards in hand, five cards in deck. We can assume that he does not have his three gold cards. We can assume that. So he might not have or Yorveth. He might not have a Glace, although a Glace would be something he'd probably want to play to Frost my row. So I'm actually going to make the assumption that he's not holding a Glace or not running it. I also don't think he's running Shiru because of the way he's... I mean, I don't think he runs Shiru if you want to bring out 15-point Dwarves. I think I'm just igneing here. I think this is the igni, uh, the igni turn. I hate portals. It's gonna be pretty close here. We have a 13 point play on the summoning circle. We still have it. I play around Igni here. Oh, man. Too bad about Siri Nova. Three cards left in deck. Man, this, this deck does it well. It does get through it well, but... I can play another Werewolf now. I play an Igni if it is Igni, but I think this is probably the best the best uh, summoning circle target I'll get. But I think we lose. I don't think 34 is going to be enough considering we're down by 33 right now. I mean, there is the attrition here. We get another 12 points from attrition. We might get it. But we're playing into an Igni. He needs to have Igni to beat us. No, I mean, he could beat us. We might win this game, though, guys. We might win this game. This, go this one's getting posted no matter what. Win or lose. I feel like this is a pretty good game. Summoning circle kind of paid off there because that's the I was waiting on a 13 point, but this is even better, or it could be the worst thing. But I just don't think it's Igni. I just don't think it's Igni. I could be wrong and eat those words. I am who I need to be. We lose. So he did have two of his three gold cards. Unfortunately. How close was it at least? Not too close. Dwarves, tough to beat, guys. What can I say? That is a topic of discussion. Dwarves are really tough to beat. Good game, Matranos. Good game. This will be the second time I post a video where Matranos beats me, but at least this one's a little closer, I think. Right? A little closer? Summoning circle pick up strengthening on base copy? It does not. Nekirat was a bad play? Why was it a bad play? Kid Schnitt, who I've never seen in my chat before criticizing my plays. Why was it so bad? They told me this was the best Twitch channel. Is that right? Uh, it's pretty good. I'm biased, though. 